and welcome to Fundraising for Artistic Projects. I'm Sarah Rashid, Director and Creative Producer at Spin Arts Management. It is an absolute pleasure to be delivering this presentation on behalf of Dance UK. Not just because I never in my wildest dreams imagined that I would be considered a fundraiser, but because I trained in dance with zero ambitions for fundraising and I have managed to completely turn that around. It took me several years into my career to realise that without learning how to fundraise, I would be reliant on someone else giving me the job. And even if I got the job, I would probably spend a large chunk of my time delivering their creative ideas. I hope this presentation will give you an insight into some of the many ways that you can raise money to realise your artistic ideas. But more importantly, I hope that you will have greater confidence to go out there and try some of them. I've spent the last few years doing exactly that. It's not been easy and I'm still learning, but it has and can be fun. And I feel incredibly grateful that it has put me in the driving seat of my career. I hope this brief insight sets you on that journey. So what areas of fundraising am I going to share with you today? We are going to take a quick look at the fundraising landscape and some of the challenges we are faced with right here, right now. We will uncover the art of fundraising and some of the assets a fundraiser might have. We will explore our fundraising options and touch base with some fundraising do's and don'ts before moving on to grants proposals with a specific focus on Arts Council's grants for the arts. And last but not least, I will reveal my favourite fundraising tip. So first up, fundraising landscape. Before attempting to raise money, for any one of your ideas, it is important to know and understand the context that surrounds it. Whether that is in particular reference to the art form, the country in which the project will happen, or the political and cultural circumstances. Take England for example. We have witnessed some local authorities slash their entire arts budgets. More and more we are faced with theatres and venues tightening their programming budgets being less able to take risks on the unknown or emerging artists, particularly in the contemporary field. I'm sure we are all aware of diminishing disposable income that we all have to spend on leisure activities. We have witnessed our Arts Council make brave decisions about how to make financial cuts and we were all bracing ourselves for yet more. We know that there is significantly more competition for grants and we are competing alongside larger, well-renowned organisations that are also rapidly seeking to diversify their income sources. It's not exactly the brightest picture and like never before we are being tested for survival of the fittest. But don't let that put you off. I set up my business Spin Arts Management just over 12 months ago and have managed to raise half a million pounds actual cash support towards independent artistic ideas. So what do I think the assets of a fundraiser are? I should point out that these are not limited assets or qualities, they can vary. These are merely my opinion of the top five that I find most useful. So first and foremost, you have to have an understanding of quality art, art that is exciting, important, surprising or challenging. You can only get this by being active in the sector. See performances, research, practice, refine and develop. Of course art is subjective, but test your ideas with others. Test if the work or the artist demonstrates talent or ability. Secondly, dare yourself to be creative. Strive to work with the very best artists and collaborators in the business and be just as imaginative about how you are going to approach fundraising as you do your art. This isn't a one-stop shop. Thirdly, you must be able to keep your goals in sight. Some of the best projects can take three, if not five years to develop. Don't rush. Do your research, plan in advance, and give yourself the time to meet potential donors and attract investment. If you are planning projects up to one year in advance, this is not a sustainable model. Fourthly, be organized. Before approaching sponsors, investors, or partners, Know your timescales, your facts and your figures. Be clear about what you're asking them for and what they will get in return. And lastly, never be afraid to ask. 
Have the confidence, the enthusiasm and persistence and whilst doing that, wear a smile. In most cases, I dare say, fundraising for artistic projects is not a case of life and death, although at times it might feel like it. But you may as well enjoy it and by doing so, I think you'll inevit inevitably secure long-lasting relationships with your investors. If these suggestions are some of the flavours of fundraising, what is the recipe for the art of fundraising? To put it briefly, you need to remember that fundraising is not about getting out your begging bowl and apologising for asking for support. It is about a real transaction. If you can give me or provide me with X, in return I will give you and provide you with Z. It is as simple as that. It is about marketing and presenting yourself or your company in a way that people are clear what it is that you are asking for and that they know how to give it to you should they wish to. Once you have refined what it is that you need to ask for, remember to fully explore what fundraising options are available to you. So what fundraising options are available? Some of the many that I come across are self-funding, private donors, internet fundraising, in-kind support, commissions, box office ticket sales, corporate and business sponsorship, money from local authorities and grants. Again, this is not an exhausted list, but some of them from the most common ones that I come across. So let's unpick each of them in a little more detail. Self-funding. Now this isn't something that I want to advocate, but in extreme circumstances, you may have to consider doing a second job and putting a percentage or fraction of your earnings into your creative idea in order to lever in additional funds from elsewhere. For example, take my business. Our primary focus is to produce artists' work. However, most months I will write funding applications for other artists and organisations for a one-off fee in order to lever in additional cash to support me to work on projects that don't yet have the funding or resources. Fundraising has almost become my second job to producing and in actual fact it's great because the skills really complement each other. This approach allows my business to be proactive and be selective of the artists we choose to produce. You tread a fine line and the balancing act of work and life isn't easy but it is something that can be achieved if thoroughly considered. I extend self-funding to immediate family and friends. Is there anything you can do for them in return for them supporting your idea? I'm not necessarily talking large amounts of money, small gifts are equally as important. If we need to get better at asking the public for money, why not start with your nearest and dearest? I know, I cringe a little when saying this, particularly being from a working class background where most of my family still haven't had access to high quality art experiences. However, it doesn't stop me trying to go on this journey and it allows me to continue to practice talking about how and why the arts is important to the general public. Private donors. All too often we think of the rich and wealthy as out of our reach. Who are they? How do I find them? And if I do find them, why would they want to give money to me? I.e. take the notion of six degrees of separation. In theory, we are all approximately six or less steps away by a way of introduction from knowing any other person in the world. Apparently, we are closer to four steps away with the introduction through social media sites. Therefore, use your networks, ask your peers who they received money from. The entire sector is having to get better at asking individuals to support their mission so now could not be a better time to start practicing this skill. One of the private investors we work with said, you know the thing about artists is they just need to get better at asking. To which I replied, what do you mean by better at asking? He paused for a moment, laughed and simply said, actually just asking full stop. There are people out there that want to give that find it fun to give, so encourage them to do so. And I suggest the best place to start is listening to what they are interested in, what excites them. And if their opinion marries yours, capture their imagination with your artistic idea. We are currently seeking private investment for a couple of the artistic projects we are working on. 
We are accepting contributions of £5,000 and targeting investors via an investment prospect, prospectus and informal conversations. The types of things you could include in investment prospectus are an introduction to yourself, your company and your work. Outline your artistic plans for the next few years and specifically what areas you want them to support. Include audience responses to your work and tell them when and where you plan to present the work. Tell them the track record of your collaborative team. This is where picking the best collaborators comes in handy, as renowned names can often open up opportunities for investment. Give them an overview of your budget and be clear about how the profits will be divided, should you make any. Outline any risks involved, i.e they might not make a financial gain or return at the end of this. Make sure you include all of the legal bits. Who has ownership, what's their stake in it, and who has the say about what the future of the work is. So set some rules. And lastly, make it easy to contribute. We include a simple form for them to complete and our bank details. I'm not by any means suggesting that you all rush out and start distributing investment prospectors here, there and everywhere, but have it in mind whilst you continue to expand your networks. Remember, securing the investment is just the start. The real test comes when learning how to maintain those relationships and seek continued investment. Internet fundraising, also known as crowdfunding. Online crowdfunding campaigns are emerging as potentially quick and easy donation methods. It allows you to ask for money for specific projects by asking for small donations from a lot of people. The proposal or ask is often hosted on a trusted third party website. There are loads of platforms that exist out there, so make sure you choose wisely. Some of the most popular and successful for artistic projects are Kickstarter, Sponsor Me, or Indiegogo. On most crowdfunding sites, you will be asked to create a profile where you should upload a compelling blurb about your project and the most important work you do. Where possible, include a video in your pitch. It gives investors a chance to see who you are, see your passions and the people you were trying to reach. You will probably be asked to set a target amount and an end date. Be aware, some sites will not pay out if you do not reach your target figure, so be realistic. You can often set varying levels of contribution, so give your investors an opportunity to decide how much they want to, com to commit and consider if you offer incentives once the work or the project has been made, i.e. do they get a free ticket to the show. Before you start sharing the link and asking people to give, Ask your nearest and dearest to donate first. Money attracts money, so if you already have some commitment, people will feel less cautious about it. Once you start distributing your link, you need to be proactive, really proactive. Generally, this approach is only successful if you can get it to a network of people that share your passion. Getting your profile set up is just the start, so make sure you leave enough time to market it. Corporate sponsorship is when a business pays for all or some of the costs associated with a project in exchange for recognition. Corporations may request their logos displayed on publicity and may ask to be credited in a specific way. Corporate sponsorship is often for projects that would not be able to run without financial assistance. It is not the same as philanthropy. Our most successful fundraising from businesses has been to cover direct costs for specific services or products, i.e. when working on Terrarium Dance in a Bubble, we were sponsored by the company who manufactured the staging, which saved us around £7,500. And when I started my business, I was fortunate enough to, to secure sponsorship for all of my office equipment. And I'm currently researching, targeting and building relationships with ice cream producers for a future project. So think outside of the box. This type of, of fundraising isn't the easiest in this financial climate. The benefits to the business can be hard to define upfront, making them very wary. 
Similarly to targeting, targeting private donors, I would suggest that you start by doing your research. Explore who your ideal sponsor would be. Learn more about what they'd expect or need as sponsors and make your approach. Commissions. Commissions are where someone or an organisation is willing to pay for the creation of the piece of art. Commissions can be offered via an open call and often have very specific requirements attached to them. Alternatively, you can seek a commission from a venue, dance agency or other relevant partners. You will probably want to target people or organisations that you already have an existing relationship with and who trust you to realise your creative ideas in line with their artistic preference or aesthetic. We have been able to secure commissions from £1,000 to £20,000. If you are approaching a partner that has never commissioned you before, I suggest you start small and aim to increase their investment in your work over time. Local authority funding. The government distribute, distribute funds to local councils in order to pay for services. They also have responsibility for economic, social and environmental well-being of that area. Every council area is different, so the amount of money allocated to culture and the arts can vary from place to place. If you're producing work or projects that will eventually reach and benefit the people of a specific area, it is well worth trying to tap, track down and introduce yourself to the Arts Development Officer or Head of Culture. Titles can vary from council to council and it's worth noting some local authorities have had to make significant cuts to their staff structures and services, therefore may not have an allocated person or budget to support your project. I recently relocated my business from the thriving cultural city of Leeds, not because there isn't money available in the local authority, but because the demand from larger, more renowned organisations such as Northern Ballet, West Yorkshire Playhouse, Yorkshire Dance and Phoenix Dance Theatre are already key players in that city. I therefore moved my business to the Civic in Barnsley a place that has provided lots of talent working in dance, a local authority that are supportive of the arts and creative industries and an area that has at times had little access to culture. So our work can have a direct impact on the people that live there. That isn't to say that I receive direct funds from the local authority, but their proactive nature and desire to take creative risks have incredibly benefit, been beneficial to my business and the clients that we work with. Box office, ticket sales and admission charges. It is important to factor into your budget that you can earn money from your project or idea by asking the public to buy a ticket. Any profits made from a ticket could cover some of the costs for making the work. It is important to price your work appropriately. Overpricing could result in minimal ticket sales. You also need to remember that depending on the deal you arrange with the venue, partner or location, they may require a cut of the ticket sales in order to cover their overheads. Fundraising from events. You may have noticed that charity balls, dinners, cabaret performances, auctions and raffles are seemingly much more popular in the arts. Again, this is targeting small donations from individuals, a way in which anyone can feel like they can contribute to a cause they care about. Be aware, setting up such activities take time and may involve some upfront costs. Make sure you keep your expenditure to a minimum in order to ensure the funds raised from the event goes directly to the cause and not to the event costs. In-kind support. Before we move on to grants, I just want to spend a little bit of time focusing on in-kind support. This is last but by no means least. It's important to remember that fundraising can take more forms than just money. Barter, ask for rehearsal space or equipment at a cheaper rate and in, if possible for free. Times are hard but some organisations are funded in order to offer artists services or products at a cheaper rate. So reflect this in your budget, credit and value the organisation for offering you this privilege. 
Again, consider what you can offer them in return. We often manage to secure free or subsidised rehearsal space by sharing our work with the local community or professionals through workshops, classes or sharings. Let's briefly recap what we have learnt so far. Plan your fundraising strategy well in advance. Do your research before making an ask. Consider other people's needs before your own and think how your project might fulfil them. Be realistic about the amount you can raise and the time frame for delivery. Credit your investors. Maintain the relationship through the project and beyond. Be creative both in terms of the art you want to produce but also your approach to making it happen. We are now going to shift our focus more intensively to grants. There are many grants, trusts and foundations that are open to receiving applications. They often require you to complete a form or proposal detailing how and why you meet their aims. Each of them has their own unique criteria, priorities, proposal formats and deadlines. Before making any applications, ensure that you have the eligible legal and financial structures in place. Many will only fund charity, charities or charitable not-for-profit companies. There are pros and cons to all business structures, so make sure you take the time to consider what business model is right for you and, where possible, seek advice from a specialist. If you have the appropriate business structure to apply to grants and wish to apply, then I would suggest you start by trying to build a relationship with the potential funder. You can develop relationships by researching, calling and, where possible, arranging to meet directly with the funder. You can go to meet the funder events, you can invite funders to your events. Keep in contact with previous funders, even when you are not approaching them for money. Networking at events and conferences, especially those focusing on your area of work, as funders may attend these. When you ring charitable trusts and foundations, remember to always prepare your questions before you ring. Write them down if necessary. Be clear about the work you'd like them to fund so you can explain it well. Engage the grants officer or trust administrator in conversations about the project. Listen and write down the points they tell you. Sometimes grant officers provide some extra information about the funders' priorities to help you understand the specific emphasis or approach of their grants committee. It is a good idea to take notes. You may have more than one project in mind. You could discuss two possible projects with a funder. So as long as they are both clear and meet the funder's criteria, by discussing a couple of options with the funder, you may get a better idea of which project is most likely to be successful. If it's not clear from their published information, ask them how much money it is acceptable to ask for. If average grants are listed on their website or, or printed information, check that the amount you want to ask for is acceptable. Read their website and ask some specific questions. Check whether the work or the project you would like them to fund fully meets their criteria. Show that you have done your own homework and really thought about the project in detail. Officers will remember this and you are, and are most likely to advocate on your behalf when you send in your application. Many funders list the grants that they have given out recently. Read through these lists and get a clearer idea of the types of projects the funder likes to fund, locations of recent projects, average amounts of grants. When talking to funders, try to mention an example of how you've supported a particular beneficiary and the difference that this has made. A powerful and specific example is much more likely to stick in the grant officer's mind. If anything is not clear to you about the funder's process or application form, check this out with them. Make sure you understand their questions. Sometimes discussions about the meaning of questions will also enable you to understand their criteria better. With smaller trusts, ask them what kind of work they generally like to fund, if this is not clear. Try to ask them what kind of letter or proposal they would like and how long they would like that. 
If possible, engage them in conversations before applying. Talk about your work, the project that you have in mind. A friendly conversation with the trust manager or administrator can enable you to build a good rapport with him or her. If you make contact with staff in a smaller trust and they know you, this could influence the process. Note, with larger grants and funders, it can be more difficult to build relationships with staff due to the amount of applications they receive and stricter or more rigid, procedure, rigid procedures in place. Grant writing fundamentals. Even though the format or procedure can change from one funder to the next, there are some fundamentals that can be applied to all proposals, i.e. tell a good story or an X-factor story as I call it. Your idea, your creative idea is what drives the project and it must be clearly outlined within your proposal. Make sure your donor or funder knows what you aim to achieve, how it responds to meet particular needs or challenges and how your project is different to others. Package the idea. Engage the reader by giving them an idea or context, a time and a place in which the activity will happen. Give them a sense of who the project will include and what impact it will have on the beneficiaries. Give facts, evidence, outputs and numbers to back up your idea. Tell them what you need to realise the idea Outline exactly what you will deliver, who needs to be involved, what equipment is required and how much it's going to cost. Give them confidence in your ability. What skills and experience do the team have? What is your track record? How will you manage the money? As well as outline key activities and time scales that it will take to deliver the activity. Communication mechanisms. How will you reach the people the activity is intended for? How will you raise the profile of the project? What marketing activities will you implement? How and when will you communicate or report to the donor or the funder? Sustainability. What happens after the project? Are there any long lasting legacies? What impact will the project have had on the beneficiaries? What will the impact be on you? And how will you know your project has been successful? Let's move on to a more specific grant, one of the most common ones for independent artists and arts organisations. Arts Council England grants for the arts. The Arts Council of England works to get great art to everyone by championing, developing and investing in artistic experiences which enrich people's lives. They support a range of activities across the arts, museum and libraries, from theatre to digital art reading to dance, music to literature, and crafts to collections. The Arts Council have identified five goals or priorities. Goal one, talent and artistic excellence are thriving and celebrated. Goal two, more people experience and are inspired by the arts. Goal three, the arts are sustainable, resilient, and innovative. Goal four, the arts leadership and workforce are diverse and highly skilled. Goal five, every child and young person has the opportunity to experience the richness of the arts. Grants for the arts are specifically for activities carried out over a set period that engage people in England in arts activities and help artists and arts organisations in England to carry out their work. So who can apply? Individuals can apply, arts organisations and other people who use the arts in their work. Who can not apply? Organisations that share out profits to members or shareholders, unless the activity you are applying for is self-contained project and has clear benefit to the public. Students for activities related to their course of study or their tuition fee. By student, they mean a person following a course of study in a school, a college or a university. Organisations that already receive regular funding from them do not have written agreement to apply. Individual educational establishments where the activity does not provide benefits to the wider community or the artist. 
individuals or organisations based outside of the European Union are also not eligible to apply. And trustees of the Arts Council England. How much can you apply for? Grants for individuals range from £1,000 to £30,000 and can cover activities lasting up to three years. They can award larger grants for more major projects, but they do not give grants for less than £1,000. Grants to organisations range from £1,000 to £100,000 and can cover activities lasting up to three years. Please note that the grant brackets are expected to change as of July 2013, so keep your eye out to see when that happens. When can I apply? There are no deadlines. How long does it take to reach a decision? It takes six weeks for applications for under £10,000 or 12 weeks for applications over £10,000. Applications to buy or refurbish buildings often take longer. Do I need match funding? Yes, and at least 10% cash or in-kind support. What happens if my application is unsuccessful? You'll receive a letter explaining the main reasons and contact details for further feedback. If my application is unsuccessful, can I apply again? Yes, you can, but it's advised that you deal with the previous feedback. If you resubmit without making those changes, it's likely that you will continue to be unfunded. How many times can I apply? Only one application can be assessed at any one time, but you can have more than one application on the go at any one time. So how to apply? I remember this by a simple seven-step plan. So first of all, download and read the How to Apply booklet. You can find that on the Arts Council's website. Two, plan your project. Three, set up an online account so that you can log in and update your project. Four, fill in the application form. Five, make sure your budget balances. Six, write the proposal and seven, submit it. What is the proposal format for Grants for the Arts? The proposal is di divided into five sections you and your work, how the public will engage with your activity, making it happen, finance and evaluation. The type of information that you should include in these headings are as follows. You and your work. You want to tell them about what it is you want to do and how you plan to do it, what you hope to achieve and why it is important, how it fits with your current work and its future development, how it might affect the people who experience it, or how it will affect the arts more widely. You want to tell them the names and the skills and the experience of the people involved. You want to tell them what you will do to achieve high quality and how this activity will help you to develop the quality of your work in the future. How the public will engage with your work. You want to tell them what involvement the public have had in your work what involvement they will have in your work, either immediately or in the long term. You want to tell them details about the type of people that the activity aims to reach and how you will inform them about the activity. You want to provide them with any evidence that you have that there is demand for your activity or your work in general. How your work supports the aims and policies of relevant local authorities or other public organisations. Give them evidence that your activity represents good value for money. How you have considered the needs and expectations of the people the activity is intended for. Making it happen. They will want to know any plans that you have made already. How you will manage and carry out this activity to meet its aims. Your past experience of successfully managing similar activity and they'll want to know the involvement or support of any partners, including those providing funding. They'll want to know the local community's involvement in the, the decisions about the activity and the long-term effect this activity will have on how you manage your work. In the finance section, they'll want to know how the budget is suited to the activity you are planning, including details of how you've worked out any wages or fees. They'll want to know the approach that you have taken to raising as much money as you can from other sources. 
as well as updating them about any progress that those applications might have. Any effect that the activity will have on your long-term financial position is also useful to tell them and the financial controls that you have put in place to make sure that the money is spent wisely, as well as how the spending on your activity will affect your cash flow. Evaluation. What will your report include that will explain to the Arts Council how you met the initial aims laid out in your proposal? You may want to consider some of the following. Any evidence that you have that the activity happened. Examples of marketing material, statements, feedback from participants and audience members, a reflection of your experience, including any key learning points, strengths, challenges that the activity faced. Journals, images, film footage and documentation. You could also include information about how you intend to track the amount of people and who the activity engaged. A breakdown of how the money was spent and details of any changes that may have occurred. So now you have a better understanding of Grants for the Arts, let's go through some of the vital do's and don'ts. So do, research funding options well in advance. Know your deadlines and turnaround times. Take advantage of more experienced advice and guidance and make contact with the funder via email, phone or a face-to-face -face meeting prior to submitting your proposal. Allow plenty of time to plan your project or idea. You will be expected to have spoken to partners and have plans in place. Don't just submit an idea. Research and estimate your figures as accurately as possible and check them carefully. Describe your project using clear language. Make it sound exciting. Follow the funder's guidelines, i.e. the right amount of words, pages and format, format. Read the criteria before starting to write the application. Include supporting information such as web links, footage, images, and ask someone to read your application and give feedback before submitting. Always keep a copy of your application once, you should, once you've submitted it. You will probably need to refer back to it at a later date. Keep acknowledgements of notifications or receipt in a safe place should you need to track or chase the application. Know the turnaround times for assessment and when you expect to hear back from them. And find out how the grant will be paid Arts Council will retain 10% until the project has been delivered and a report submitted. So consider how this will affect your cash flow. Open a separate project bank account for the funds to be paid directly into. Your funder won't be happy if you accidentally spend the money on a holiday. Where appropriate, retain a dialogue with funders. Invite them to see your performance. Talk to the funder if your application was unsuccessful. Arts Council generally sends out a letter that your application was unsuccessful due to a competition for funds. But call them. You can often access a breakdown of the assessment and understand how to improve it. If you are rejected first time, or first time around, resubmit. And in the meantime, keep talking and inviting them to any performances. Learn to love fundraising. If you want to be in the driving seat of your art and your career, Take the time to master these skills and you may as well enjoy it. Don't. Don't rush to start your application before looking at all funding possibilities. Don't rush to start writing your proposal before having a good understanding of your idea. Don't try to do an application without advice or reading the guidelines. Don't think that the application process is there to catch you out. It's there to help you think about your project thoroughly. Don't leave everything until the day before, particularly when submitting and uploading online. Some applications take a long time to upload. Don't throw in a budget based on estimates. Funders have a very good understanding of how much various projects cost. Even if you are successful in receiving funds based on estimated budgets, you will inevitably be presented with problems later down the line. Don't oversell the project. Be realistic about what can be achieved. 
don't submit the application so late that you find out the result the day or the week before you're due to start the work. Don't exceed the word count or provide supplementary information where it is not accepted. Don't miss deadlines. Don't keep phoning to see how things are going. If it takes six weeks for a funder to assess the application, allow for a minimum of seven to get a response. Don't spend awards on any activity that you did not include in your application. If your project changes, negotiate that with the funder. If you're unsuccessful, do not go off in a huff. Don't speak negatively about the funders. It won't make the process any easier. Don't be scared of funders. They exist to distribute funds. They need to get, to get the money out of the door. So help them by applying. And to finish off, I will share with you my favorite fundraising tip. The key to success is to utilize your personal networks and the networks of your friends and colleagues. Build relationships and make the ask.